Hello everybody, my name is Marlo and welcome to a bonus video of my Villager Houses series. If you have no idea what I'm talking about, then chances are this is the first video of mine you have seen. If that is the case, then of course, welcome. But the series that this video is a part of is the one I have just finished where we built a custom house for each of the Minecraft Villager professions. If you want to see how all of these are built, then you can check out the full playlist link in the description down below. But today in this video we are going to be taking all of these houses and turning them into a fully fledged custom village. The first step is to get all of these houses copy and then pasted into a bit of a nicer world than this one right here. Preferably with something that has a bit more to it. This is already looking so much better. We have all 13 houses dotted around this nice piece of land which we are going to be transforming. But of course just placing in the houses isn't enough. We have to do various other things. And I think the first one of which we are going to do is add in the pathways leading from one house to the other going all the way around. And I'm thinking I also might add some sort of crop field around our farmer's house here aka the windmill. It really is quite cool how just by adding in something as super simple as a pathway going around your village can entirely change how it looks. If we just take a fly on up here, you can see it's looking so much better than it did before, or at least I think it does anyway. I'm sure you guys can agree with me there, but yeah, this is the pathway added in, and of course we have our field of crops around the windmill, which certainly makes that look a whole lot better. But this pathway design is just something very, very simple. We have a combination of cobble, andesite, gravel, path blocks, and then coarse dirt. Basically, the idea with this natural pathway is that once it was just regular stone throughout the whole way around, but obviously it's been used and trodden on so many times that a bit of dirt and other blocks have been traipsed on through. So yeah, I really like using something like this when I do my village pathways. Very easy. It's basically just texturizing with all of the blocks you have, and I think it looks super, super cool. So yeah, we have the pathway ended in and the field of crops. Now what we have to do is focus on the more natural elements. And by that, I simply mean bone mill, so we can get some of that tall grass and uh, regular grass, I guess, the double high grass and the normal ones, and then also adding in some custom trees. So I'm not going to do anything that extreme with the custom trees, because you guys know how I feel about those. But yeah, going to build some them and just get some flowers so we have a nice pop of color around the village and I'm thinking I also need to do something with these four ponds that we have because right now they don't look all that interesting. These custom trees are just about as simple as it gets. They're basically just modified versions of the regular birch and oak trees. Basically for the birch ones all I do is remove the outer layer of leaves so we have a 3x3 three three and make it a little bit taller so it's a bit more realistic to an actual real life birch tree. And for the oak ones, I basically just remove and add on a couple of oak leaves here and there and place them underneath and just generally make it a bit bushier and less rigid and cube-like, like the regular Minecraft ones up there. 
So yeah, that's how I do those trees. I actually told you how to do that in a survival episode quite a long time ago. Some of you may remember that if you watch my series. So yeah, added in some custom trees, had a couple of bigger oak ones here and there. And I think I went a bit overzealous with the bone mill. There's quite a lot of grass around here, but I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing. You guys can let me know what your opinion on that is. I don't really mind all that much grass. I think it looks okay either way. And then for the little ponds over here, all I did was add in some seagrass underneath and then some sugarcane and bamboo on the side here with some string on top to stop the growth. Just like that. So yeah, we've got that for all four of the ponds. All of the trees are added in. There are plenty of flowers and too much grass maybe <laughs> added in around here. We're now ready to move on to the next step, which is actually going to be to do a little bit more building. And there's just a couple of spots in this village, let's say over here, for example, and... Uh, uh, maybe just behind some of these houses possibly and a few other spots here and there where it's looking like it's missing something. So I've got some ideas of some things we could build, maybe a little bit of a marketplace for the villagers to sell their goods. There is a beehive around here, so I'm thinking maybe build a little bit of a bee garden. I'm just going to do a couple of other smaller builds here and there around this place. I really do love builds that add life to the village or tell a story and even have moving aspects to them like the bee garden over there does with the bees in particular. Let's actually go over there and take a look at it closer up. So of course this is just something super simple. We have beehives on top of scaffolding blocks as a little bit of an elevation table. Hello friend! <laughs> and then I've placed a bunch of different flower types around here so they have plenty of places to get their pollen from. They seem to be enjoying it I think. And then over here of course is our marketplace and I unfortunately didn't want to do 13 stools for each of the villager professions otherwise I would have had to have some tiny stools or they would take up way too much room so these stools are actually shared by the villagers if we just take this one for example here this is kind of all of the blacksmith type villagers so we've got the armorer the toolsmith and the weaponsmith are all sharing this one stool and yeah I've done that for example over here let's say with the leather worker the Fletcher and the Shepherd. So that's what I've done there. Different color uh, canopies to all of these. Just a nice little pop of color towards the center of the village, which I really quite like. Got some barrel stacks and a couple of carts here just to carry and hold all of the goods that these guys are going to be selling. And then the other main build I did was actually over here because we had this big open spot. One of my horses have escaped. Wonderful. Well, it was meant to be a horse pen <laughs> for these guys to hang out in. Just got some hay bales and a nice little shelter if it starts raining with a trough to drink some water from. Um, but yeah, this guy has obviously done some hardcore parkour and made his way outside. Probably over that gap right there, I would imagine. And then the final thing I did, just so we could light up this place a bit when it gets darker, is I've added in some lampposts every now and again throughout this pathway. And I think now that we've got these added in, maybe we should let it get a little bit darker than what it is right now and see what it looks like nearer night time. Oh buddy, this does look pretty cool I must say. Hopefully you guys can see alright. I know YouTube does like to dim the brightness on videos but I just love the lanterns on the walkways just ever so slightly highlighting them all the way around the village. I think it does look really really cool and of course just the glow from the inside of all of these houses here looks awesome. But anyway, now that we've had a look at this place at night time, we are ready for the final step of this village here and that is to of course get ourselves 
some residents, aka some villagers. So if we just take the stonemason's house here as an example, I'll show you what I'm gonna do. We're gonna step inside each of these houses and come to the villager workstation that is inside all of them. In the stonemason's case, it is of course the stone cutter, and we're gonna spawn a villager in, and hopefully, as you can see, he has picked up this as his profession and has become a mason. So that's the plan, to do this for all 13 of the villager houses. Isn't that just a beautiful sight? Two villagers passing the time after a hard days of work, just seeing what they've been up to. These guys are doing it as well. This one's having a little bit of a wander about in the woods, apparently. Don't go too close to that bee nest, otherwise you're gonna get a nasty sting. I think the farmer in here should be farming away. Maybe not. Oh, yep, there he is. He's talking to the shepherd. Ah, oh, this is awesome. This is actually really cool. There's the librarian over there, and the rest are probably still inside their homes. Maybe Maybe having an early night or like the toolsmith over here who has managed to get himself well and truly stuck. Now, I would absolutely love to provide all of you with a world download of this place so you could check it out for yourself, but I'm unfortunately not gonna be doing that, and it's mainly because recently I've had some problems with people downloading my older world downloads of past videos that I've done, and basically stealing my content and my builds and passing it off as their own without giving any credit, which obviously is really frustrating and I don't want to happen again. So hopefully you guys can understand why there's not gonna be a world download for this one but nonetheless I really hope you guys did enjoy this little bonus video as a part of our villager houses series it's been a ton of fun making all of this and I thank you so much for watching I really hope you enjoyed and I'll see you next time bye for now